Well, hello everybody and welcome back here on Isolt. Just been in having some lunch. All the morning duties are done here on the last day of late spring uh, before we turn to summer. Um, I've been up putting some herbicide onto the um, canola field, which is the one that's up next to the horse stable. I'll just show you here on the map. So here's the farm, and as you can see, field 14, if I zoom in a little bit, is up here next to the horse paddock. And um, we put canola on that one, basically, because we didn't want to have to cart bales all the way down the main road, uh, since we've got two cereal fields right next to the farm. So, in terms of field work, right now, we're, we're pretty stable. Um, there's not much left to do and um, at least not until we, we hit summertime we do have to put some fertilizer back on the grass field at some point but I'm planning to try and use some slurry on that so we're gonna leave that to build up so today for the last part of the day I thought since we're figuring out seasons and everything like that we might as well try to get some pigs into this wonderful map as well. We have a huge pig facility uh, that I showed you in episode one. So, we're gonna climb into our MAN. We're gonna go and pick up our Wilson Animal Trailer. We're gonna head down to the dealership. We're gonna pick ourselves up some pigs. Now, I don't wanna spend too much money on this. Um, I really wanna feed them off the, the scraps of grains that we had left in the silo of different types and hopefully that will last us on until the other side of the harvest so we're not going to go crazy and get hundreds or thousands of pigs straight away but we, we're going to get uh, at least one maybe two trailer loads we'll, we'll see how many we can fit in and exactly how much they actually do cost because there are different breeds and prices obviously um, but to begin with we're simply gonna get our truck on the road here. I'm gonna hop into the cab as we head out of the yard here. So here we are, we start to see the signage, we've got to pass this road that heads back out. Uh, this is up towards the feed stores, and yeah, the feed stores allows you to sell crops but not buy feed. Um, now we've got to try and make it in here, there's this electricity box here, and I very often end up snagging the trail on, but I think it looks like we're clear this time. So we should make it in, fantastic, excellent follow the little road around here. Ah, looks like he's got pigs in, so that's good. Let's see how much it's gonna cost us to get a trailer load of pigs. Right, so we've got some different options here. We've got the Yorkshire one, the mother breed of pigs. It's fast growing, but it needs a high amount of capital because they're 819 a pig. If we move down to Gloucestershire, um, they're 0.2 years and only 24 kilos. Um, it only costs 210, so this, this is for fattening up basically and then selling again. Personally, I think that might be quite a promising thing to start with. It's great for the starting farmer, it says as well, so it might be good for us to try and start out with something a bit simpler rather than breeding pigs straight away simply fattening up a bunch of them. Uh, we do have the spotted pigs, that's another uh, F for female I guess, but it means that they are capable of breeding, uh, it's, it's my understanding of how seasons work. Um, and then we've got another fattening up pig, which is the Berkshire. It's a fast growing animal, requires a modest amount of capital, and it's known for their flavorful meat. So to be honest, it's either between the Berkshire or Gloucestershire, and I think because we are trying to keep down cost, we are going to go for the simpler Gloucestershire Old Spot. We're going to try and fatten up some pigs 
And then obviously we're going to have to be able to sell them again at some point. Um, there's room for, oh, there we go. Livestock trailer is full. I'm not even sure exactly how many of that was, but it's a good amount. We spent seven and a half thousand euros on pigs. So we better get them back up to the farm now. And then we're going to get some feed in. And then we're going to start figuring out how they're actually doing. Um, and then that will probably be it for springtime. Because we'll be moving into summer shortly. Actually summer is not necessarily going to be hugely busy. Uh, our, our crops are in. We got our livestock they're getting established. So I think if anything, um, the first part of summer is simply going to be looking at what is the routine in, in terms of um, the animals and then um, we're going to take it from there. But first we're going to get these pigs back up to the farm. I had to drive carefully obviously, we've got livestock on board now so although I'm going a bit fast this is on a nice smooth road. We're going to slow down well ahead of the turn so we don't um, end up sending animals sliding all over the back of our trailer. I'll probably mean a lot more cleaning for me as well anyway. So maybe for the turn here and then shortly up here we're going to be heading up the big hill. So much like with the cattle we don't have any straw on the farm right now so we are gonna let them produce slurry rather than manure and I think we're gonna keep pigs uh, on on slurry production generally speaking like I mentioned before I do plan to put bedding down for the cattle and when we start moving into autumn when it starts getting a bit chilly uh, they'll benefit from from having that bit of warmth in the stable that's perfect right on top of the steepest hill we get stuck behind a really slow moving I don't know maybe it's a tourist or something out taking in the landscape well Maybe he's admiring a wonderful field over here on the right. Does look good. Wheat's coming through nicely. We put herbicide down in the last episode. So hopefully this one should now stay free of weeds. Whereas the barley farm further up that road there um, does not have any herbicide on it. We're going to be a bit experimental and see how it might be to be um, taking an organic approach to to the farming here on Ayasold. I mean, that would be nice. It would actually be nice if we um, if we don't have to put herbicide down because it's not actually affecting um, yield all that much. Uh, then I'd be quite happy with that because the herbicide is expensive. So now I just got to figure out exactly how we get this trailer down here to the unloading area. Um, let's see. So I reckon we actually need to turn this way first so we can get the trailer reversed over towards the loading area. Whoop, that's a bit drastic turn there, but we're good enough. Here we go. Better put some flashers on so that people can see we're moving around here. That sort of parked right up to it, so let's get some pigs moved in. Quite a lot of pigs we can fit in here. That's great. Confirm. And we want to get some water and some feed to them as quickly as possible. We got our Massey tractor in here and we got our water trailer. Can't remember exactly how much is in it. We've been topping up the cows lately, so there might be a little bit in it. And if there is, we'll just get that in to begin with and then we'll go and refill and see how much they need in total. But there's nothing. Yeah, it's empty. So straight over to refill. Right, so we're pulling up to the water point here on the side. Um, I have to say, I am very very pleased with this map in terms of uh, small things like like balancing and one other thing here is so we're now filling this water trailer as you can see the money is not moving I think that's quite reasonable considering that we pay about 800 euros a day for building upkeep uh, we now have 7,300 liters in our tanker here 
Um, I'm gonna take it straight over to pigs because we don't want to leave them thirsty in their new home. Um, I know we haven't even had a look at what they look like inside the barn yet. We will do that as soon as we get this water in to them. There we go. And I suspect... Oh wow, that was not a lot. Okay, we finally found the pigs after an incessant amount of scrolling on this map. I really wish this, this is the one thing that bugs me about FS19 is, is the way that the animal screen is laid out. I, I really would have liked if they could have made like a tree view so you could unfold um, each um, animal enclosure. So you can still see the individual animals in it, but um, that everything doesn't just start in one giant unfolded list, but nevertheless. Okay, so we have some animals that they're not going to be breeding. Uh, hey, they've already produced three liters of slurry. Uh, that was quick, but we've given them water. So next bit, uh, we're going to need to get them. So first of all, I'm going to give them soybeans, corn, sunflowers, and then wheat, barley, millet, rye, dread kale, uh, secondary. Um, we could think about buying some pig food in as well, I guess. Now let me see. Yeah, on the side of the silos. So the silos have their own building there, which I still think is amazing. I absolutely love that building. Um, and then in the shed here, uh, this was part of the starting equipment, as I mentioned in the first episode. Um, we got some trailers and uh, we'll just hook one of these onto the masses. We'll put a little bit of grain in and uh, we'll take it over to the pigs see how it goes. So we are going to put in some of the, now we've got canals, we've got sunflowers, we've got soybeans. So let's put in sunflowers to begin with. We'll put the lot in. We've got just shy of 8,000 liters there. And we'll put it in. We'll take it over to the pigs and we'll see how much of that they take. So our animals, make a mental note of this viewers, are on 24 kilos right now. Obviously we want to grow them, we want to grow them health-wise and we want to grow them uh, weight-wise and then we're going to take them back down to the deal and sell them again at some point. Now, hmm, that's looking quite narrow actually. <laughs> uh, I assume the markets in here will be for straw. Uh, these are the water troughs, they get filled by that tank out there, that's really nice detail, I like that. Oh, what have we got? Is that something? No, that's not something. It looked like it might have been a, a, a tip tray, but it looks like it's in here. So, now it gets interesting. I don't know if our trailer is going to fit in there. Like so. And then, hopefully, if I manage to reverse this trailer in here, maybe. Maybe. There we go. So we're unloading some sunflowers. So it took about a thousand, let's see. So a thousand liters of soybeans, corn, sunflowers, excellent. Um, so at least they have something to eat now. And then we're gonna see if we can give them some basic grain as well. I don't wanna use up all the basic grain because we're also using that to feed uh, our chickens with. So the wheat and barley in particular are also being used to feed the chickens. But well, obviously we got to just um, dump the rest of these sunflowers uh, back over in the shed here um, because, well, we don't need them right now. We will need them later on. Uh, I'm hoping that we can actually see when, when we go back to the shed um, we can see how much it's going to require to feed the animals for a year. And that will give us an idea about where we are relative to what we have. Because that will tell us whether we should be getting another load right away or, or whether we should try and hold off. So we know we've got quite a lot of grain uh, to feed them right now, so it's not a massive problem. But nevertheless, so come back out of here and then I reverse the trailer in and I get 
get some more grain for the pigs. Now I reckon it might be just a thousand litres of barley as well, so there we'll put 3,600 into the trailer right now. Let's give that a shot, we'll see how it goes. So we're here with the barley, we've got to do another narrow entry. I kind of wish there was some kind of pig feeding mod that you could either fill with the grains and mix it to pig food or something. A little bit like a TMR feed mixer, but um, for, well, for pigs, but mobile, that you could drive into a pig stable like this because, I mean, this is quite a realistic depiction of, of a pig stable in terms of you got a narrow path down, down the area there. Um, and this trailer is just about fits in, but it really feels like we ought to have something a bit smaller to to fit in there, but I'm not quite sure. So if you know of a super duper mod or something like that, that would do the job, uh, drop a comment and uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it. But here's our pigs, yay! They're, they're looking fine. Hopefully they'll be happy now, happy and healthy. Now, strangely enough, they're kind of walking through this door here, but I guess I could open it for them. There. I'll make them happy, I think. I hope. And then maybe on the other side here as well. Like so. Yeah. Not down the center path, because we don't want them kind of walking out uh, at, the, at the end of the day. But I like the fact that they got some outdoor space. You know, this isn't just sort of super intensive mega farming, although we can fit a lot of pigs in, um, there is room for them to kind of go and root outside and, and have a good life like that, so I like that. Anyway, so the big question is, should we get some more? It's only 20 to 2 in the afternoon. I reckon we could make another run, fill up the trailer again, bring bring another load of spotted pigs in and get them growing as well. Now this is a little bit of an investment but it's it's not a massive monetary investment up front. We're basically just using up grain. Oh, before I go, we're going to look at how much grain they actually take till the end of the year. So let's do that before we go off and, and buy some. Okay, so here it is. It says this pen requires 7,605 liters of food to feed its animals for the next year. We can definitely do that. Easily, in fact. Um, we have 7,000 liters, we've got 6,000 liters now of sunflowers, we've got seven of corn, quite a few thousand of soybeans, we've got some wheat and barley. Um, I reckon we can keep this going. It might not be at 100% productivity, but worst case scenario, we, we could buy in some pig food. So I'm quite happy that we're going to go and get another load. So let's get back down to the animal dealer. There, that's a full trailer again. Excellent. So, the first load of pigs required about 7,600, so logic dictates that if we double that, we're looking at about 15 and a half thousand liters of feed, I guess spread out over the different types. Um, that's okay. I think we can manage that with what we got in the silos, at least I hope, and then, yeah, it's gonna be a delayed profit, but we're building something on the farm and we're actually making use of more and more of the buildings on this huge farm complex. I'm quite pleased with that. Otherwise it kind of feels like we, we, we got a massive farm but we're not really using it for anything. And obviously at some point we're going to get some harvest in and although we almost certainly will desperately need to sell some of that, we can keep some grain back to help feed animals. So at least in terms of um, chickens and, and, and pigs. We got uh, plenty of silage and uh, hay and there'll be a bunch of straw coming in um, to help with the cattle as well. So all in all, pretty good. I made 
that batch we need. At some point we might have to think about this shed, whether this is actually where we're going to be keeping trailers, because we're going to have to make room for um, straw bales, and I reckon down here sort of uh, a pretty decent halfway point between the uh, animal stables and if we need any straw to put into our uh, total mix ration down at this plant here then uh, this shed is pretty good for that kind of storage the trailers can probably get moved up we got an empty shed sitting up next to the cow shed and uh, there wouldn't be any problem in, in putting those trailers in there at least over winter but we still got time to deal with that, so I put them there to begin with and we can leave them there just for now. So I'm just going to put the uh, MAN back. So we already had barley in the trailer, so we might as well get a little bit more tipped in now. I assume that since there are more animals, that also now equates to more barley being required. Although... The trigger doesn't seem to be wanting anymore right now. Yeah, the bars are still showing us full on a thousand liters. Um, I guess that's okay. We'll, we'll just check them a bit, uh, again in the morning, but notice that the water has gone down. Um, so we're going to bring the water trailer back over and we'll see how we get on. And welcome back to an early summer morning on Ice Hall in, I don't know, typical Northern European summer weather. It's raining. But that's fine. Uh, the only thing we've really got left to do in this episode is to go down and check on our pigs and see how they're doing. I can see I left it open, but that's probably okay. Let's have a look, see? look happy and we'll just have a quick check on their screen so there we are after the first night in the shed our little pigs here along the list I'm just scrolling up and down the list a bit up oh, back up the chickens there for a moment um, not gone down a whole lot on food the health seemed to have dropped a bit but they have gained weight. So they were 24 kilos when they came in, they're 29 now. Um, we may have to consider getting them some pig food, I guess. They produced 521 liters of slurry, which is fair enough, they're small pigs. Um, so yeah, uh, there's not much topping up needing to be done at this stage. They're, they're looking reasonably happy, but I think in the next episode where we look into the whole animal husbandry, I think, and uh, using some of the products, i.e. the slurry, um, to fertilize the grass, we'll, um, we'll, we'll have a look around all of the animals on the farm and uh, do the morning chores, but I think for this episode, we got our screenshot right here, of some happy little pigs. And um, for now, I think it's thank you very much from Overcourt Gaming, and see you again soon.